it's vital that if we're going to be led by the Spirit, and I want you to pay close attention to this, if we're going to be led by the Spirit, we must be fed by the Spirit. See, we can't eat anything and be led by the Spirit. And that's why it's important to understand what churches we become a part of and where we uh, place our membership to and where we join up and fellowship with. Because some churches won't teach us how to be led by the Spirit. But churches that are ordained and anointed by God, they will teach us how to be led by the Spirit. And how would they teach us that? Because they will feed us by the Spirit. See, you can't lead me if you don't feed me. Amen. Amen. And we got to be careful as preachers of the gospel to let people know we're not against people trying to increase their financial well-being. But to do it at the behest or to do it at the expense of losing their soul we got to preach against that. If money is the most important thing, then I'm lost. Help me, Holy Ghost. If money is the most important thing in my life, I'm lost. And I know, see, we say, well, and, and I know for a fact, here's the thing I know. I know for a fact there are going to be people who say, well, I want my money. Fine. Get all of it you want, and you'll, do, you'll never have enough. People that are led by the Spirit must be fed by the Spirit. Amen. I know people, oh, I like how you say this. Uh, I'm not trying to say this mean. I'm trying to say this in a situation. I want to stir you up. Amen. Amen. I want to bring some conviction and trouble your way in the Spirit. To let you know that the, the most important thing in life is getting Jesus Christ. Amen. See, we must get our our food from scripture. Amen. To be led by the spirit, we must be fed by the spirit. Right. Jesus met a woman at the well in John chapter 4. He told her, he said, you done had five husbands. Amen. She had a problem picking men. Now, it doesn't say, all, if you ask me, all her husbands could have died naturally. And so she just remarried. But I don't think that was the implication. The implication was that you have went through men or men have went through, you've ran through men or men have ran through you. And then he told us, and the one you're with now is not your husband. See, she had a problem picking men. He didn't, he didn't say, let me, let me clarify. He didn't say she had five boyfriends. He said she had five what? Husbands. Which means she went through the ceremonies of being married. She just was a terrible picker of men. Okay. He said, and the one you with? And not your husband. That must have been boring. That's right. <laughs> she probably said, ain't no more marriages. <laughs> When we are led by the Spirit, we become more selective in our process of who we allow in our life and in our circle and who speaks to our heart. When we are led by the Spirit, we are more selective. And I shared this months ago, I said, our life consists of, we started with people, our life consists of, of arrivals and departures, like at an airport. Amen. Some people, they need to get that plane up in there and get on up out of there. And some people, we'll wait for them to come. Our life consists of who we allow to arrive and who we allow to depart. And let me say this. Sometimes you got to let some people close to you depart so God can send the proper arrivals. Being led by the Spirit means I'm willing to let go and let some folk depart Amen. so the others that God has for me can arrive. Amen. Man. 
God's desire to guide us will require us to trust. Often we will not understand his direction. Because his ways are so, so far above ours, he sometimes steers us in paths we cannot understand because he knows they are best for us. When Pharaoh let the people go, I'm reading from the Berean Study Bible. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them along the road through the land of the Philistines, though it was shorter. For God said if the people faced war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. This is God's spirit leading his people out of slavery through the wilderness to their promise. That's the transition. Sin is slavery. Sin is slavery. The wilderness is our life. It's our dash. The wilderness journey is our lifetime. The promise is the rapture. That's moving it to the New Testament or a new day, new day understanding of our journey. Sin is slavery. The wilderness is our lifetime. The rapture is our promised land. God never intended for us to set up habitat in the wilderness. We're pilgrims and strangers in this land. He never intended for us to bed down and, 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 and you know, place roots in the wilderness. That's not his pattern. Once he pulls us out of slavery through the spirit, he used the Holy Ghost to remit our sins. Amen. Amen. We come out of slavery. We leave slavery. We start our wilderness journey. We're headed toward the rapture. That's why we don't put permanent roots in a temporary journey. It says when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them along the road through the land of the Philistines. Even though it was a shorter route. God's not looking for us to take shortcuts. <laughs> it was a shorter route, but God's not, God's not looking for us to take shortcuts. The journey is the journey. Amen. For God said that he knew his people. He said that they had, been, they had been in slavery so long that if they faced war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. He knew that their actions did not match their mindset. Amen. Their mindset was still slavery. Their actions was, we're willing to get out of slavery, but... We got what we gonna do, where we gonna go. And he said, I can't take it. It was a shorter way, but I can't take it that way because if you see war from the Philistines, you're gonna wanna go back to Egypt. You don't wanna go back to slavery. I have ran across people in my years of walking with the Lord. God delivered them and brought them out of sin, brought them out of slavery. Then they got in the wilderness. And they ran up against some fierce opposition and we're back in the sin. And they'll say stuff like this. It was easier when I wasn't saved. That's what the Egyptians, that's what the Israelites said about the Jews. It was better we stay in Egypt. We had water in Egypt. We had food in Egypt. The mentality was not there even though their activity of leaving slavery happened because they lost focus of the promised land because of what they were dealing with in the wilderness. And people can easily do it. We can lose focus of the rapture 
Because what we're dealing with in this lifetime. And it's vital that we stay focused on the rapture, on the catching away, on eternal life. It's, it's vital, it's critical that we stay focused on eternal life. Why are we on our wilderness journey? Because when we lose focus of that, then the Bible says that God called the Israelites stiff-necked, hard-hearted, amen, murmuring and complaining. When we take our eyes off the prize of the rapture and being with Jesus forever and ever, then we become stubborn Stiff neck. Amen. 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 Ungrateful, mm -hmm. murmuring, and complaining. The wilderness was never designed to be a permanent home. Amen. <laughs> they wandered for 40 years on a journey that should have lasted probably about 11, 12 days. But such is the way. And the spirit will lead. Amen. <laughs> and let's look what it says here. So God led the people around the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the Israelites left the land of Egypt arrayed for battle. They left Egypt and they were ready to do battle. They were, they're ready to venture out. And then Exodus chapter 13, verse number 19, Berean Study Bible says, Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the sons of Israel swear a solemn oath when he said, God will surely attend to you. Then you must carry my bones with you from this place. Bury me in the land of my father's. Amen. And he wanted to go back to Palestine and be buried. Not in Egypt. He wanted to go back to Palestine and be buried. That was the, that was the journey. Church got to be careful because there's some charlatans out there that tell you that if you don't have a certain amount of money, if you don't have this, there's charlatans, crooks. Amen. Gurus. Folks trying to separate you from your God while chasing money. Don't fall for it. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Don't fall for it. it ain't nothing new in the sun. It's been tried over and over again. Simon the Sorcerer tried to purchase putting the land on the hands of people getting the Holy Ghost for money. And Peter them rebuked him. Alexander the silversmith started a riot in Ephesus because the apostles were saying, what do you all need all these idols for? And they saw their money slipping away. The damsel that was prophesying about Paul, these men are the, men are the most high God, and Paul cast out that demon in her, and the men lost their money and they wanted to throw him in jail. This ain't the first time Charlton Crooks Gurus have tried to separate you from your money. Amen. Don't fall for it. Amen. Fall on your knees. Ask God to help you. Repent of your sins. Allow God to change your heart and change your mind. Receive the Holy Spirit. And then it says, be baptized in the water in Jesus' name. Allow God to transform your life while you're in your wilderness. Right. You can't take anything in the wilderness with you in the rapture. Ain't no Rolex. Ain't no Rolls Royce. Amen. Ain't none of that going. Right. <laughs> Ain't no rolls of money. None of that's going with you in the rapture. Amen. Don't get distracted. Allow God to lead you by the Spirit. Make God first. Amen. I ain't going to say place him, but put him first. Make him first. Be intentional about it. Make God first in your life. Thank you, Lord. Yes. 
repent, fall on your knees. What that song, Holy Night says, fall on your knees and hear the angel voices. Then God will help you select better and pick better and wait on the God, wait on the Lord. And understand you ain't going to understand everything. See, first thing we got to do is learn that we don't understand. We don't know everything. We ain't trying to, the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Oh, yeah. Everything, you know, we're going to manifest. You ain't manifesting nothing. Mm. Quit lying to yourself. Humble yourself. Amen. What did the Lord require in Micah chapter 6? Oh man, to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Humble yourself. Let us humble ourselves before God. Lord, I need you more than you need me. Lord, I need help. I need you to help me through my wilderness journey. I'm on a journey. I know out there I'm going to sometimes not have water. Sometimes I'm not going to have food. But Lord, I know if you give me my daily bread, my manna, I'll be able to make it if I trust you and let myself be led by the Spirit of God. I'll get where you want me to go. Yeah. 